Hey everybody, Arfeolus here. Welcome back to our Pokemon Sword and Shield. Last time, we explored a little bit more of the Isle of Armor, chasing after some very fast Slowpoke, and yeah, and this time we're supposed to return back to the, uh, um, dojo. But first things first, here's a nice little diglet in the corner that I forgot about. Alright, just two more diglets here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to wrap, wrap up the diglets here. So there's two more somewhere? I don't know where they are. Yeah, I know, Future Me's been killing me with these, uh, super long ed edits. Sorry, it's not my fault that I'm super slow and doffed and all that fun stuff. I have to take my time through everything. Hi, Klefki. Oh yeah, a couple other things in up between episodes. The first one is that, well, I got a solid through surprise trade, right? so I'll be tra raising that up for, uh, Pokédex reasons. And everyone is really beat up because of raids. And speaking of raids, um, I put everyone on some Poké jobs just so I can raise them up a little bit more. Including two of our Pokemon just because reasons. So yeah, all that fun stuff. So yeah, I got quite a few Pokemon. Just trying to think, was there anything to note really? Um, I caught a few uh, Rock Rust for uh, Dex reasons. I was trying to go for the uh, the secret ability one, but didn't really want want to come out to me. And I think that's it. Nothing else I can think of. So. Here I'll be going around the uh, this area, trying to find the last two of the uh, 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 Lolan Diglets. They're here somewhere. Okay, a couple things I should mention though now since we've progressed a little bit more. Here this NPC will sell you some berries if you want them. Another thing to know is that this NPC here will give you pretty much all, give you some more uh, things to fry up, including some brittle bones, fresh cream, some uh, smoked pokey tail, and yeah. You can literally fry up Slowpoke Tail in front of a Slowpoke, and the Slowpoke will eat it. Yay! Alright, here's one of the Diglets here. Now, where's the last one at? This can't be in the ocean. There you are, you little bugger. Right down here towards the star. I thought there was something down here. I thought there was. Huzzah! We got them all. Alright, so I'll see you guys all back at the Adoja at long last. Enough inventory stuff out of the way. Alright then. All that shenanigans finally done. Back here at the Pokemon Dojin talk to you. What? I'm your Watt Trader. You want something? See, so yeah, so this guy is your regional uh, Watt Trader here. You're able to trade some Watts for some items. These items are not really that good. So yeah, he does sell uh, Wishing Pieces too. Something I should know is that, well... We gotta sell some new NPCs around, but let's go ahead on in and see what's going on. Oh, Orf, welcome back. You, don't you tell me you got my uniform back all on your own. Uh, here you go. Oh, well, uh, thanks. Well, Mustard Orf. You cleared the first trial like it was nothing. Why, well, I think it's the first time since you know, that someone's able to handle all three fast slowpoke on their own. The rest of you tried very hard, too. You were able to catch up to the slowpoke. But I guess you couldn't defeat them. Ugh. Tell you what, anyone who's able to catch up to a slowpoke at least gets a pass. Orf really did out to him did it himself, so it's only fair everyone else gets another chance. Try to make a comeback, everyone. Oh, how generous. Eh, either way, I'm still out. Oh, that reminds me, honey. Where are those little ones? Oh, that's right, darling. I had nearly forgotten. Squared hole, Bubba Sword, come on in, sweeties. These are sweet little Pokemon, Bulbasaur and Squirtle. We've all been taking care of them together. And I'd say they're more than a little curious about your strength as a trainer. Why don't you pick one to keep for yourself? You didn't succeed in the trail, after all. And just so you know, these two have been raised in a very special way. When they evolve, they'll be able to Gigantamax. Alright, so now we are given our own star Pokemon from the Kanto region. Eat a great Orph! Indeed, so we have two Pokemon we can choose from. Two of the Kanto starters, whereas the third one, eh, ask Leon. So, with this all done, let's get started with the first battles of the episode, starting up with Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is a grass type Pokemon that I like quite a lot. As a Pokemon, it's a defensive grass Pokemon. Eh, sorry. 
While it seemed kind of managed Gen 1, now it's a force to reckon with. Nice bulk and good special attack and defense. Making a pre and all right, be making a pretty good alternative to Grookey. And a nice alternative because Grookey is more of a uh, physical based Pokemon, while Bulbasaur is more of a special based Pokemon. So yeah, I can learn quite a few moves such as the Powders, Leech Seed, and Synthesis if you have the long term in mind if you want a more, more slow based setup. And on the offense, it does have the TR, Solar Beam, if you can get Hidden Ability, Bulbasaur, Sludge Bomb. Makes it really good because we go in first in Insta Turn Charge. Sludge Bomb, Weather Ball, Giga Drain. It's really nice, and that's about it, really. It's really good in Sunny Day teams, which is all nice in the end because uh, Earth, sorry, Weather Ball will be a, a fire time move and all the fun stuff. So, yeah, it's a nice choice during the early game since you're kind of full leveled and the Pokemon will be able to uh, catch up really fast. Post game, not really so much since they're level 5. The alternative to Bulbasaur is Squirtle. Squirtle is a defensive Pokemon having high defense and special defense. Its offensive stats are pretty alright. It is a defensive based Pokemon, but can unleash Surf or Water Pulse early. Shell Smash to, to come in more like a Sweeper, Brick Break, Ice Beam, Dragon Pulse, Aura Sphere, Flash Cannon. Where is Mega Blastoise when he could use all these blue fools, meh. Well, at least Squir Squirtle is a pretty nice Pokemon since it's more of a defensive based Pokemon instead of offense, which is a nice contrast to uh, a Sub, which is more of a uh, Sweeper. This, this is more of a uh, bulky Pokemon, which I do like. Once again, level 5, it's pretty alright, so yeah. Two Pokemon! I didn't choose a po- I, I did not choose a starter. I will not be using either of them for the long term, but, um... Yeah, let's go Squirtle. So, yeah, so, funny little thing, though, is that Squirtle is actually my favorite of the Cantonian starters. Then Bulbasaur, then Charmander. I am sorry I used Charmander too many times and was disappointed too many times. It's not an easy Pokemon to use, and honestly, Charizard gets too much of the, uh... Of the attention. So you're going with our little Squirtle. It's a great water type. Great, it's great with water type moves. Hi. All right, Squirtle became your Pokemon. All right, and they are Pokemon in the decks. Sorry, when it reacts. Sorry, when it re when it retracts its long neck into a shell, it squirts out water with vigorous force. Um, no need to give it a nickname. And I guess I'll add it to the party. I guess. Uh, farewell, Sobble. I'll just use some rare candies. Swear it looks pleased as as punch that you chose it. Remember that your new Pokemon will be able to Gigantamax once it has fully evolved, so be sure to raise it well. Dynamaxing. A mysterious phenomenon unique to the Pokemon of Galar. And then there's Gigantamaxing, a very special way of Dynamaxing for very special Pokemon. Their moves change, of course, but their appearance change too. Speaking of Gigantamax, there is that secret recipe of the Master Dojo. Drink it will make you gigantic and strong. I call it Max Soup. I'd love to have a bowl of Max Soup full of Max Mushrooms right about now. It sure has been a while. And that's why your second trial shall be Mushroom Picking! Max Mushrooms are the key to Gigantamaxing. And I'm tasking you to finding three. Max mushrooms are red with a spiral pattern. I'm pretty sure they grow in dark human places. And with that, your next trial begins. I'm counting on ya. Oh, whoa! And don't you worry, Bulbasaur. I'll be sure to raise you with lots of love. Oh, I'll make you oh so strong, so you'll never lose a squirtle. Tee <laughs> hee. Sonny, if you want that Pokemon to learn new moves, you can leave that to me. Well, aren't you the sweetest thing? That that lovely lad is always so kind. Give him a bit of arm right or he'll teach you your darling new Pokemon a new move. You should give it a try. So we get some free arm right ores here. So yes, yeah, so this unlocks a new move tutor here. I'm completely obsessed with moves. Under the supervision of my master, I've been developing new moves day and night. I spent a lot of time developing many moves. I'll teach your Pokemon a move for a small token of gratitude. All right then, so we're able to teach some moves. Depend we're able to teach some moves. So here are the moves that we can learn: Terrain Pulse, 50 move. Yeah, a lot of these moves are pretty much based around uh, uh, terrain. There's one for each type. This one is a Terrain Pulse. It's uh, type and power changes depending on the terrain it's using. It's very similar to uh, Weather Ball. Burning Jealousy, 70. 70 power, uh, 100 accuracy move. If the opponent has boosted up their stats, it's going to leave a pretty pretty nasty remark. And then flip turn. It uh, it's pretty much a uh, 
attack that retreats once you use it. It's not really super useful. It's like U-turn. Right, Rising Voltage is a uh, pretty nice move. Its power is double when the target is on tele electric terrain, which is very nice for Pokemon that uses electric terrain, such as uh, Pincurchin. Grassy Glide, if you have uh, the hidden ability for Grookey, teach Grassy Glide. It is super good. Priority on Grassy Terrain when it naturally spawns Grassy Terrain. It's very good. Triple Axe Well is a uh, niche move. It's a three-hit attack that becomes more powerful with each successful hit. It's pretty good for, like, Hitmontop and uh, Sneasel. And other Pokemon that have uh, um, Technician. Coaching is a fun move. It, I think this move was used er in an earlier Pokemon game, I think. It's very familiar, I think. Yeah, I think it was actually used with uh, Fassimian, I think. So yeah, Coaching raises the attack and defense stats of all ally Pokemon. It's really good for max raids, but not really so great in single player. Corrosive uh, Gas um, burns pretty much held items away. It's not really super useful. Scorching Sand is a pretty nice move, actually. 70 power, 100 accuracy. Chance to leave the target with a burn. It's actually really nice. Though Earth, Earth Power is a little bit more powerful. This is pretty nice, though, but 70 power is not the greatest. Dual Wing Beat is a two-hit move for flying-type Pokemon. It's all right. Expanding Force is a psychic type move that does 80 damage and hits everyone if it's on psychic terrain, not the most useful. Next up is Skitter Smack. It's a niche move. It lowers the target special attack. Consider it just an upgrade to a Struggle Bug. Meteor Beam! I love this move. Meteor Beam is a two-turn attack, two turn attack, boosts special attack when it's a special type move, and then unleashes it. With the Power Herb, it's a one-turn special attack boost that does 120 power. Super... Super useful in Pokemon that can learn it, especially powerful Rock-type Pokemon. It's not the most uh, most advanced, but it's really good. Next up is Poltergeist, which, well, high power for a Pokemon that can learn... It's high power for a Pokemon, and if the opponent's holding a held item, it's be able to attack, otherwise it does nothing. For single player, it does nothing. Skill Shot's a 25 power move. Um, boosts the user's speed, stab lowers its defense, it's not super fantastic. Last Shot's an interesting move. Um, if the opponent... Sorry, if the user's stat were lower this turn, the power of the move will be doubled, so if you get intimidated, pretty nice, but it's relatively niche. Steamroller, it's a very powerful move, but it removes all uh, terrain on the battlefield. I think this was used by a few other Pokemon before. And Misty Explosion! It's an explosion, power increase on Misty Terrain, it's not worth it because it's an explosion with low base power. Alright then. So, with this all done, we can talk to Honey now. I'll take your care of that little Bulbasaur so Razor Squirtle well. Alright then, so I guess I should probably go ahead and stop in at the Pokemon Center. So we can go ahead and restore our Pokemon since I'm a little beat up. Alright, nice and healed. So with this all done, now we have ourselves a little bit of a Squirtle in the party. And some fun stuff too, so we have Metronome, Amnesia, Wild Charge, some fun stuff there. I guess uh, Castilia Cone, yeah, I've been trying to get the uh, Battle Cafe reward, but I just can't get it for poor uh, Cremuse. I took Cremuse out of the party since she was getting a little overpowered. So yeah, so fun thing about all these candy. I've been doing a little bit of grinding off screen. Just a little bit. Experience candy L is very powerful. It gives like a lot of experience too. So yeah, like I did a little bit of testing off screen. I was able to get Gauss up to level 70 with all the candy I have. I will say it's pretty strong. Um, just trying to think. Um, actually I think just one XL candy L will be enough. I I want for Squirtle. Level 23. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I need better things to do with my free time. Rapid Spin, that's actually a really good move for uh, Squirtle because it removes spikes and increases speed. Turter. Wants to learn Move Bite. Eh, I guess. I'm not going to be using Squirtle, but... It's a nice fun Pokemon to have. Water Pulse? Upgraded Water Gun. Once one move Protect, no thank you. Rain Dance, no thank you. Alright, we got War Turtle. Recognized by as a symbol of longevity. If its shell has all on it, War Turtle is very old. It's an old Pokemon. 
Alright then, so that's really it here for now. So now, we're tasked with going back out to the wild area. And looking for some more mushrooms. Hey Wolf, my bad, my bad. Oh, it's mustard. That was honey. It just dawned on me that you're brand new to the Isle of Armor. I bet you have no idea where to even begin looking for max mushrooms. Come on, let's go for a walk. I'll show you some mushroom hot spots. Dum 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 Now, usually the forest of focus is chock full of max mushrooms. But the thing is, a swarm of green that came through and ate every last one here. So I'm thinking you may have more luck finding max mushrooms if you go check warm-up tunnel. It's a little on the other side of the forest. Just watch where you go into the forest, okay? It's easy to get lost. Anywho, good luck with the hunt for max mushrooms. Get you back at the dojo. Alright then, so now we are going to be heading on here to the Forest of Focus properly this time. Sadly though, still no sandstorm yet. I'd love to have a sandstorm, but I think I have to progress the main game a little bit more. And honestly, I ha honestly I found a good replacement, so here in the Forest of Focus. There's quite a few new Pokemon here, and this is actually a really nice area. Like, I like the contrast of the Forest of Focus compared to just other areas here. Alright then, so coming on further here, we are still our first Diglett here. Very nice. Next up, looking for a berry tree with a TR in it. Yeah, so the Forest of Focus is a pretty nice area. Pika Pika. Ball mushrooms here. You're able to find a lot of ball mushrooms here. I don't think there's any max mushrooms in this way. I need to hold my sense of direction. Yes, you probably should. Alright, yellow apricorn here. Yeah, I should probably do a little bit more with the apricorns. Anyways, right here is a Basimian. Basimian is a virgin exclusive Pokemon. If you're playing on Pokemon Sword, sorry, in Shield, it would, it would be an Oranguru. Pretty nice. Yeah, it's actually pretty high level too. Yeah, I've been kind of uh, getting really up there in levels, but... Eh, well, this part of the game is uh, pretty chock full of high level Pokemon. And just a lot of free experience too. Yeah, essentially this Isle of Armor is pay to win. Alright. A lot of experience there, like, holy crap, thousand! <laughs> Very nice. Displays amazing teamwork. See, I've used the uh, Pessimian before in uh, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun, and it was actually really fun. I like Pessimian. Anyways, coming right over here is the next uh, Alolan Diglett. Six more here in the Forest of Focus. And a Hype Potion! Very hype indeed. Yeah, I don't know if I kept in the uh, exploration I had here a little bit ago because I made a early dive to this later part of the area. When we first arrived here because I was wanting to get a new Pokemon for the team, but it didn't really work out. So instead, Tangrowth! Oh, it's very strong looking Tangrowth. Bring it! Well, it's already like 41. No, 36. Actually, let's go for a challenge. Oh boy. Yeah, I actually want a uh, challenging fight now. And we're asleep. So yeah, so we can't catch Tangrowth, which is actually funny because in the same spot there's level 32 Pokemon. But you know what? I think we can handle Tangrowth. It would be a nice, fun boss Pokemon. And knock off! Oh no. Alright, Ice School Crash it is. And we're fast, they're nice. Yeah, they have decent enough speed, I think. I don't think this will one... Well, it's actually very close to one shot. Stop sleeping my Pokemon! Alright, fine. You forced me to play my trump card. Go lawnmower! Yeah, actually it's funny because I never haven't used a motor yet. A bunch of Pokemon from the B team. Coming out my lawnmower of doom. Ha! You can't... Sleep a grass type Pokemon. Eat this Dark Pulse. Yeah, I, I like finding Pokemon under leveled. It's actually really fun. And level is for everybody. Wants to move Uproar? No, thank you. Our guys is 28. 
Want some rain dance? No, thank you. I think that this episode will have uh, our guys do a debut battle since we really haven't used much with our guys, sadly. Alright then, so coming up over here. Oh, I guess there's one other thing I should mention about strong looking Pokemon. They cannot be shiny. They're shiny locked. If they're above your uh, badge count, you cannot catch them. Which is actually a very nice uh, quality of life thing because otherwise, it'd be very sad that you can't catch Pokemon because you're too underleveled. Alright then, so coming on through here, yeah, I've already been uh, through the forest focus a few times just trying to get some items. Okay then, so I think it's on the other side of the bridge at the, uh... Here we are. Next Diglett's right over here. Okay then. So with that all done, now we're continuing on through the Force of Focus. Yeah, I'm going to be kind of going about it, hit and mess. Hey, it's Cramorant. Um, before I do anything, I need to wake my Pokemon up. That was his... Oh, it's the Apcorn. Okay, where's my uh, healing items? Do I have any, uh... Yep, here's Chesto. Alright, next up, Cramorant, I guess. Yeah, I like trying to catch Pokemon, okay? Yeah, in this, in this portion of the game's been very uh, slow-paced, but... And you gotta pass the the timeout somehow, I mean, yeah, I've been working a lot of hours recently, it's been kind of burning down my mental health too, so, just sitting back, relaxing, and having a good time. Yeah, even though this Let's Play is going to be like 80 parts long, I don't really care. Alright, level ups all around. Yeah, I know, Masamune, sorry, Gauss is getting super over leveled, but, meh. Alright, then there was another cram rent. I guess they have Cram, right? Our first one, actually. Yeah, there's Pikachu. Yeah, I was trying to go through this forest here because I think... Yeah, I could probably speed things up a little bit. Nice pink apricorn. Alright, coming right over here. A Shed Shell. Very nice indeed. Okay, so there's some more water over here, and we'll need to remember this one because it leads to something pretty nice. Alright, next Diglett here. And four left. Very nice. So, yeah, we've made a full circuit through here through the forest. It's not the most winding. I think you'll say there's nothing else here. I want to get to training lowlands, but this is the right way to go. Yeah, the NPCs, sadly, they are uh, NPCs. In all sense of the oblivion. Alright, there is Miracle Seed. Um... Okay, Venipede. Yeah, I've already caught a lot of Pokemon here off screen, including max rate stuff too, so that's why I'm so over level at this point. And why I went with the B team instead of the A team, because I knew I'd get super over leveled here on the Isle of Armor, so I thought, why not just give a second team? Let them have a, have some time to shine. White Apricorn for uh, potion making, I guess, for uh, Pokeball. Yeah, for making Pokeballs. Um, Brain Smooth. We'll go bios once we're kind of done here in the forest. Alright, there is a path we haven't taken yet. That's, uh... Right up here. Yeah, there's an item over there that we can't get for a while yet. Kind of sucks, but meh. Okay, oh, I guess we already went through them all. Anyways, yeah, there's a bunch of Amoonguses in the forest. I don't know, they seem very sus. And actually, it's a good time to catch the Moongus too, because Moonguses, they are, uh... They evolve at level 39! Which is actually kind of ridiculous for a Pokemon that's not super fantastic, so... Getting one level 26 is very nice. And this is the reason why I held off until after 3rd gem, just because all these Pokemon are, uh... A little bit up there in terms of levels and strength. Oh no, my stat changes. Um... Yeah, Bug Bite, I guess. Yeah, I'll see you guys once we catch the Moongus. Yeah, since Moongus is Pokemon, they evolve level 39, so... Definitely want one of these to catch. Yeah, if you want to use one, go ahead and catch one one of these. Because 39 is not worth the wait. 
Like, it's a decent enough Pokemon, especially for competitive, but for single player, it's actually rubbish. Alright. Good, you're not doing anything stupid. Um. Yeah, you got great balls for days. There we go. Nice and free experience there. Another Pokemon for the decks, I guess. Yeah, I've been getting very careless with this episode. Oh well. I'm kind of in that point anymore. It's like, eh, whatever. Help, I've become a Squall Leonhart. Anyways, yeah, next sense is going to be right over here. Hooray, another Diglett. Alright, three more to find. I think next one's along this pathway a little bit. Yeah, actually, I actually took notes on where all the Diglett is so that way I'm not filming around for like 20 minutes. Alright, right here we are. Alright, just a couple left. Notes say next to tree, overlooking bridge. Oh, right here. Pretty nice. Alright, one more. Somewhere. Right here. Alright, that actually went super smoothly. Huzzah! So that's all the poke all the uh Diglett here in Forest of Focus. Yeah, it's actually weird that one of them would be in a uh would be in the water there since we don't have access to waters for a while. So yeah, so the reason why I want to do this is because there is a very hard to get reward that you can get if you get every single Diglett right now. Which you can. So with that all done, we're done here in the Forest of Focus. How are we on time? How am I on energy? Eh, you know what? Pikachu, go away. So yeah, so we're right up here. There is the training lowlands, which I think we're going to include things off here. So I'm just going to have my trainer uh, work work out their strength a little bit, hang out on this bridge. Next time in Pokemon Sword and Shield, we'll head out to the training lowlands, explore pretty much all this area up ahead. And there's quite a fun, few fun things over that way. And seeing if we can get some max mushrooms. I know these episodes have been very disjointed, but meh, 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 meh. I will see you all then. Alright, now for the bios for those who are masochistic enough to sit through my rambling for 20 minutes. Yeah, Force of Focus has a few new Pokemon. First up is Emolga. Having sudden terrible flashbacks to Gen 5, Emolga is an annoying Pokemon. Static, double team, acrobatics. <laughs> this thing is the devil. While annoying to the face, it doesn't have much going for it. It has a good speed stat, and that's roughly about it. Its offensive stats are okay at 75, but nothing special. It's also very frail with low defenses and HP, so it's better to go first or rip. It has some okay moves leveling up like Acrobatics and Discharge, and access to Air Slash, Energy Ball, Iron Tail, and otherwise that. New Fool is okay, nothing too impressive. All around the Pokemon is meh. Okay for the early game, but late game it kind of struggles a bit. Double Team can go so far, and it's not the fastest, so it will be outsped by a few Pokemon, and yeah. Not the greatest, and I would say go for Pikachu for your Pikachu clone needs. Next up is Venipede. Venipede is an interesting bug poison type Pokemon. Its first two forms are nothing amazing, as you'd expect out of a bug type Pokemon, but the meat comes in Scallopede level 30. It's a fast Pokemon that's even faster than Emolga! Already a win. That's a good attack set and defense set, which isn't really that terrible. So yeah, it has poison point in swarm for its abilities, but its hidden ability is super good. Speed boost. This makes it this makes this Pokemon very good. But it's a hit but it's a hidden ability, so yeah. So it's a little bit of a out of the way to get it for raids or uh, other other methods. Move-wise, you'll need to use TMs and charts because outside of Bug Bite and Poison Tail, the good moves aren't until super late, like 74 late. Cross Poison, Earthquake, Bulldoze, Mega Horn, Superpower, and Toxic Spikes are some pretty good, nice moves to use. Pretty alright, all things considered, Pokemon might be worth using to have. Let's expect to use quite a bit of TRs. Next up is Fungus. Fungus is an okay Pokemon, but better suited for comp. As the Pokemon, it's a very slow and bulky grass poison type Pokemon that specializes in tanking and such. It evolves at a pretty high level at level 39, but you are able to find yourself some lower uh, lower, lower level to Moonguses out in the forest of focus, which is pretty alright. Yeah, the Pokemon is very slow with a speed set of only 30. It makes up for it for having good HP and okay defenses. It takes hits and has access to some very valuable moves such as Spore, Giga Drain, Synthesis, Toxic, and Foul Play. It fits more for the defenses that status, but it's really good for the long-term plays if you want to go for the uh, slow and steady wins the race things. 
It does have access to a few other moves like Palm Puff and Substitute also. Its other moves are kind of lackluster. Kind of lackluster, having little TR availability and teams are okay. Hex is pretty alright for our, for the stats moves that loves to dish out. It's more built on the competitive scene. It's okay for casual playthrough, but a little bit pain to use, so expect to go use Among Us. Next up is Tangela. Tangela is a very good grass Pokemon to use. I personally really like the line, as the Pokemon has good defense and special attack. It's kind of slow and terrible special defense. It evolves with Ancient Power level 24, and Tangrowth is a beast. Very solid special, very solid physical attacks in high defense and good special attack. It's a very strong Pokemon to use, balanced out with 50 speed and special defense. So yeah, so a Pokemon that's fast with fire type moves will probably roast it, roast it alive. It has access to some very good moves like Power Whip, Giga Drain, Rock Slide, Earthquake, Sludge Bomb, and Focus Blast. Good mixed stats and good move pull to back it up. The main downside though is that it has terrible special defense, which is a bit of a hindrance, but has loads of fizz, but with Galar being more physical based, it's actually a really good Pokemon to use with its mixed nature, and if you want a good grass type Pokemon, I would actually recommend it. Not quite as overpowered as say a Rosary, but still really up there, I'd say it's like one of the best grass type Pokemon in general. I really like it, and I was actually considering using uh, Tangrowth for the Let's Play, but eh, I needed something to take out the second gem leader. Next up is Larvesta. Larvesta in the sunny days, you'll be able to get Larvesta, I already said that again. Unlike a lot of Pokemon that would be very good early game, I suggest waiting to get Larvesta at the end game. It evolves at level 59. It is insane. Level 16 Rare Candy is way better to get for it, get it into Volcarona. Larvesta and Volcarona are different Pokemon. One's a physical base while the other one's special. Volcarona is very good. 135 special attack and very good special defense and speed, making it a very potent Pokemon. The main downside though is that it's very weak to rock and stealth rocks is a counter, but hey, heavy du booty dudes, sorry, heavy duty boots were introduced in this game. So huzzah, look who's back in OU. Yeah, it has access to some very powerful moves. Good, yeah, good move pull, check, such as Heat Wave, Quiver Dance, and yeah, Fire Dance is with a movie learner. Oh boy. Bug Buzz and Hurricane, you don't need TRs. So yeah, learn some naturally. So yeah, other moves you can teach it. Psychic, Giga Drain, very powerful moves. It's a very potent Pokemon. Now worth grinding to 59 though. If you can find it in the wild, you can find Volcarona in the wild level 42 later, which makes the later game earlier, but it is still a Pokemon that I'd recommend waiting if you want to use it, if you want to use it at all. It's very good for uh, competitive play, not great for single player. Next up is Pinsir. Pinsir is a bug fighting type Pokemon without the fighting part in its, in its typing. As the Pokemon has good attack and defense and all right speed, it takes some hits and deals some back making it a pretty good Pokemon. Paper Cutter and Mold Breaker are both very good abilities to have. Mold Breaker for hidden ability, not so great but still pretty alright because for the main games you won't really have to deal with too many abilities. As for its move pool, I say it's a fighting type Pokemon in name only because it learns a lot of fighting type moves in its level up moves such as Super Power and yeah. Other moves it's more limited to, only having access to x and Bug Bite. So yeah, TM-wise you'll expect a lot of fighting type moves with this Pokemon, so yeah. It does have access to a lot of fighting type moves, and a lot of fighting type po- Well, I guess fighting type, uh, what you expect out of a fighting type Pokemon, without the fighting type, uh, hindrances, I guess. All around, it's a pretty nice Pokemon to use. High attack, modest other stats, so it's a pretty nice Pokemon to use. Just, don't get stabbed for close combat. Next up is Heracross. Heracross is Pinsir with slight stat, uh, stat tweaks. Hits hard with the same fighting type moves that I can learn from Pinsir, except it does get stabbed with them. On the downside, it's now super weak to flying type Pokemon. Oh well. So yeah, so it learns quite a few uh, moves. The main downside though is that it's kind of lacking in the bug department though. So use x Scissor for uh, TRs when you get it because Megahorn's not until superly late. So yeah, 55 yikes for its only bug type move you can learn. Other moves you can learn, like Aerial Lays, Brick Break, Sword Stand, Sword Chop, pretty similar to Pinsir in nature. Bo both Pokemon are pretty similar. One is Sword and the other is Shield, so both are kind of interchangeable. I like Heracross more, even though it has major weakness to flying, it still is pretty good to use. Next up is Sandshrew. Sandshrew is a sad victim of Power Creep, as the Pokemon is a nice physical Pokemon with good attack and defense, so very low specials. Compared to Exedrill, it is slow, not as good attack, and it just gets heavily outclassed super easily. It does have access, well it's able to evolve at a very low level which helps it out quite a bit. Bulldoze at a low level is very good. Rapid Spin with the buff is also pretty good too for an option. 
A lot of its fun moves aren't until late though, like Sword of Sand 51, so yeah. Moves are kind of your standard ground flare, brick break, earthquake, leech life, iron tail. You can get it to low in form now also, so yeah. So it's also pretty similar to, uh, I guess low in form is pretty similar to normal sand slash. I'll go over the alternate forms once we're able to get them since, well, they do take a hot minute, so. Hooray! Next up is Cubone. Cubone is another Pokemon that suffered from Gen 1 itis. As a Pokemon, it is slow but has good defenses. 110 for its defense is pretty alright, and its attacking stats are also pretty good. But the speed stat cripples it. It's pretty slow and has, well, yeah, a better move pool than Sandshrew. And evolves, well, it gets moves like Summon Tantrum level 24. And when it levels up, it's actually pretty good. Some other moves you can teach are like Elemental Punches and Earthquake, making it better than Sandshrew. Swords Dance, Sword Throat Shop are also good options. There's also the Lone Form, which is pretty, much, which is pretty similar, except it does have uh, Ghost type Typing. Once again, going over the full bios once you have access to them. Next up are the dupe mods. First up is Bassimian. For, for sword players, you'll have access to Bassimian. Bassimian is an alright fighting type Pokemon. Its regular ability is useless. The fight is pretty good, but it's, that's a hidden ability. So yeah, stats are generally alright. So yeah, downside though is that it's pretty slow for experience grouping. 120 attack is pretty good. Speed and defense stats are pretty alright, though it has pretty bad specials. For moves, it's very lacking with a lot of the fun moves aren't available until the 50s. Not much for level up, so TRs it is. Rock Slide, Brick Break, Earthquake, Super Power, Seed Bomb, Gunk Shot, for examples. It's a decent fight at Pokemon. There's a few others like Alucha too that do outpace it a bit, but it's still a pretty good Pokemon. Just expect to use a lot of TRs. Next up is Oranguru. Oranguru is more of a special based Pokemon and the counterpart to Bessimian. It's uh, not good in single player. Stat wise, it's a bulky psychic normal type Pokemon with great special defense and good HP and defense. Special attack is good, though it's pretty slow. Its level type move is not good. Nasty Plot is good for setup, trick room for uh, speed because it's slow, psychic, and such. Instruct is really good in Dynamax raids, but otherwise it's useless. Until it has access to psychic at high levels, it's kind of a hindrance and depends a lot on TRs, and all around it's a decent Pokemon, but there's a lot of Pokemon that heavily outclass it. Next up is Cramorant. You can find Cramorant pretty soon in the wild area naturally. It's an okay water flying type Pokemon. Its gimmick though is using Surf and Dive to hide underwater, and it gets a Pikachu or Ericu depending on its HP thresholds. Pikachu if it's under half health, or uh, um, Ericu if it's above half health. And yeah, when it takes damage though, it spits up those Pokemon. If it's Pikachu, then the Pokemon will be paralyzed. If it's uh, Ericu, the opponent will have a chance to uh, flinch, I think. Yeah, both hitting one-fourth of the maximum damage, so yeah. It's a very gimmicking Pokemon. Well, no, Ericuda lowers the defense, that's right. Yeah, it's nothing too special, though. Its stats are okay. It has great special defense and alright attacking stats, which is pretty alright. Learns to dive at 28, so you have to wait a little bit. And TRs, you have to use Surf in order to use. Other moves include Ice Beam, Drill Pack, Throat Chop, and Superpower. Overall, it's a decent Pokemon to use. Nothing super spectacular like Gyarados, but eh, it's alright. And lastly is Silly Cobra. Silly Cobra is an alright ground type Pokemon. Normally not available until after reaching Hammerlock, Silly Cobra is a ground type Pokemon with Sand Spit, which counters damage by creating a Sandstorm. Kinda situational, I prefer Sandstorm overall, but it's still generally okay. Takes a bit to evolve, especially arriving here first thing in the Isle of Armor. Sat wise, is a physical Pokemon with good defense and alright attacking stats. The other stats are kinda mad, it's pretty slow also. For moves, Glare is pretty good stats moves for inducing paralysis. Otherwise, kind of, it's not really fantastic for a level up, say, for Dig. Yeah, it requires quite a few TRs and TMs to get powerful Earthquakes and Headbutt, Iron Head, etc. It's an okay Pokemon, however, though, compared to the Titans of Gen 5 like Exegrill and Crocodile, Silver Cobra kind of falls short. So, with that, that's all the Pokemon here available in the uh, Force of Focus. My, my voice is dead. Next time in Sword and Shield, Training Lowlands, and more BIOS because who needs story progress? I will see you all then.